Hello, thank you for joining me. You can see where I am today. We're going to go in this video to visit the ruins of Cambus Kenneth Abbey and then we're going to go up to the Wallace Monument to see the fine views over Stirling. I've just come over the road bridge from the railway station. The video isn't really about railways but um, let's have a look at the railway north of Stirling. See Stirling North signal box there. It's all electrified now. It wasn't um, until only a few years ago they electrified. I'm going to continue this way and then about a mile that way is Campus Kenneth Abbey. That's the River Forth there which we're running beside. Of course the Forth is quite famous for the, the bridges, the rail bridge and the two road bridges. I'm going to continue basically straight that way. The Forth meanders around there and um, Ken, Canvas Kenneth Abbey I believe is on the other side so we'll have to cross the Forth at some point. I'm currently walking along Abbey Road in Stirling, not to be confused by any means with Abbey Road in London. Up there is Stirling Castle, so we were up there in a recent video, have a look at link on screen now, we didn't go in the castle, we explored the area around the castle. When we get to here at this junction, you can see up there is the Wallace Monument, so that is obviously where we're heading. And of course the reason this road is called Abbey Road is because of Canvas Kenneth Abbey, which I think I can just see the top of the tower off, so we'll continue across the fourth and find Canvas Kenneth Abbey. Up over there is Stirling Castle. I'm now on the bridge over the River Forth. That way is looking inland and that way is towards Edinburgh. Although actually Edinburgh is the river flows that way, but Edinburgh itself would be that way. So we're going to continue off the river bridge. We're leaving the main body of the city of Stirling behind. In front of us is the village of Campus Kenneth, where the Abbey is. It is also known as Stirling Abbey sometimes, and it's quite an interesting looking abbey. I've not been here before in the um there's nothing, not a lot left, apart from just a few fragmentary walls, foundations of the church. But it had an external tower, which seems to have survived pretty intact, so I could see it. So I'm going to continue on up here, we're going to find this abbey. I've now come to the end of South Street in Canvas Kenneth, quite clearly see the castle up there. There's another parallel street along there, which is North Street. Ah, and there is the Wallace Monument. Now, the Wallace Monument stands up on the Abbey Crag which is a volcanic rock. The reason it's called the Abbey Craig is because of the Abbey. And there's the Abbey there, and the tower, as I mentioned a moment ago, just above the houses. So as I record this video, I'm gonna see this Abbey for the first time. It's a very nice street, lots of flowers and everything. It's a shame about the weather, but then, you know, it rains a lot in Britain. And somehow it adds something about going to ruined Abbey on a rainy day that I actually think is nice. I like, um, well, I mean, I, I go to ruined Abbeys, just I like going to them. There we are, look at that, that's a per such a perfect tower. Um, I'm not sure how much or how little we'll be able to see, but I'm pretty sure we can go and look around the ruins of the ruined abbey. We come, we've basically come to the very edge of the urban area of Stirling. Now, let's go through, I'm not going to walk over the category of a camera just in case I drop it, which would be awkward. So here we are, here is Canvas Kenneth Abbey. And then looking up over there, you can just see the high town of the, of the Stirling Castle. So let's have a look. It's one of the, I like it when this is a picture of how the abbey would have looked before it was ruined. You can just see that here. So let's have a look at that. So as we stand here, that's what we see today. That's what it once looked like. So you can see the tower, it once had a spire on it. The abbey church would have been here, cloisters just to there and then there is another monastic building so let's go in and explore these ruins so here we are we've come through the gate into the abbey the abbey um, was founded by king david the first who lived not too far away up at sterling castles i keep pointing back at and um it was a abbey later became augustian well let's first go in the into the tower here and see what we can see so, here we go, it's a nice vaulted ceiling. Now there's a door here which I'm assuming leads to a spiral staircase. Unfortunately, you can see it's locked. So I don't think we're going up the tower. So although the tower's open, it seems you can't just walk up it. Whether there is ever anyone here, you know, kind of supervising people going up and down the tower, which um, 
Oh, I'd love to look into because if there is, I'd come back because I'd love to go up the tower. But today we're going up higher and the tower's going up the Wallace Monument. Now let's go and have a look at the ruins of the church. So here it just says there, it's a freestanding bell tower. Uh, an example I can think of, which I've not actually been to, but Chichester Cathedral has a bell tower separate from the church itself. So this is the, the church. You can see the front of the church, there's some graves. And this is how it would look. That to that. This abbey is what's quite unusual is it wasn't a cloistered abbey. So the monks were able to go out and about and um, do ministry work within the local area. They didn't stay in the abbey. So, um, yeah, they, so it's slightly different because most abbeys, the monks were stayed in the abbey. Coming up to here, a royal murder. So King James III was buried here after one of the battles, but the King's Killer was never identified, so that is um, the tomb of King James III. Let's go and walk through the cloister. So this is the south transept now, and that's the north transept. So imagine me in the middle of, not a massive church, but a pretty big church, standing inside. There's the tower, of course. We're gonna step through here now into the cloisters, which is where out the monks would have exercised and see this area here this is the cloisters. Imagine a fairly big church behind me. And as I said down here. So oh, it says that's where the canon's dormitory was. So that would have been possibly above up some steps. Sometimes you see that on abbeys, you'll sort of see steps blocking the south transept or the window. You've certainly got that tin from that's called a slope. That's like a passageway between two parts of the abbey. I thought what we'll do, we'll go in here into the chapter house. It's quite a small chapter house, so this is where um, you know, they, they would have had meetings and that. It's not a religious room, not for prayer or anything like that. I did in a more recent video when I was, last time I was up in Scotland, I explored to the ruins of Elgin Cathedral and there the chapter house was complete. So have a look at link on screen now if you'd like to see that video. So we're going to leave the ruins of the abbey behind because there's a little bit more ruins to find as we come out the back of the abbey. The River Forth is taking this very meandering course so it's now behind us. So it's sort of done a huge circuit around there. Um, I think the way it works, the Wallace Monument is on this side of the river, but Stirling, as we know, isn't. So if I go out this little gate here, there's just a few more ruins to see, or one stack of ruins. Nice view of the Abbey though behind us. And then out into these fields, there's one more section of ruin. It's got a fence around it. That's possibly one of the monastic buildings. These houses here, which has net maybe become a farm, that would have been parts of the monastic building. There's also a wall here, or remains of a wall. You can see it better if I step down here. So that's, no doubt, we could see on the picture parts of, you know, the monastic site. Oh, and there is something over there. We'll go and have a look over there. So it's one of those abbeys where you've got to use a lot of your imagination. Um, the sign says we regret this area of the monument is closed, but there's not really, I mean, we can see it fairly well anyway behind the fence. Let's walk around it and um, see what we see. It's, it's the corner of a building, one of the outer buildings of the Abbey. So that's quite interesting to see now. I'm going to get my feet wet, but I'm going to walk through this wet grass anyway, so I want to see what's here. There is some form of building here. I expect what it was, was this was a long building along here. I saw it on the pictures as we came in on the outer buildings and um, just these foundations here of the building have survived. And then there's a, a lower bit. You can just see that would have been the door. I'm effectively standing on the wall. Now if I step across to here, across, across over the big wall, um, if I can get that high, look back, oh, there's some cows in the field. And there is the city of Stirling over there. So I'm gonna now make my way back through the abbey and we're gonna walk up to the Wallace Monument. I'm now leaving the village of Campus Kenneth behind me. I'm following this very straight road which leads towards the Wallace Monument. So when I get to the end of the road here, I'm gonna find a winding path up up um, the Abbey Craig. So as I said, the Abbey Craig takes its name from the Abbey, and the Abbey was founded from the view of the, view of the castle, which is just over there. So it's quite an interesting walk this. Now probably I won't come back this way. I'll take the main road 
along there. So uh, over that way, it's Bridge of Allen, and this down there, the um, bit below the monument, is Stirling University. Here, you know, look. Welcome to Canvas Kenneth. Historic village, Abbey, Arts and Orchards, it says. So, well, we saw the Abbey. So, I'm just going to continue following this road now until I have to start climbing up to the monument. So, I'm now following the road out of Canvas Kenneth. This is the road I was on a moment ago. It's the only road in and out of the village. You can, of course, get there on foot the way I came along. There's, uh, well, there's a little boarded up cottage there. Over there, Stirling Castle. We're coming to the railway line that goes to Alloa. Just go all the way through, it is a through line, but for freight only beyond Alloa. There's talk of reopening it and having a station at King Cardine. I was thinking that would be quite useful they had a station here, because it would be useful for tourists visiting the Wallace Monument, which is somewhere. Yeah, there it is. They might through the funicular as well. But anyway, um, that's me getting a bit carried away with wanting more railway infrastructure. But yeah, a little station here. Yeah, it'll be used by students at the university, no doubt. No train coming, it's called the Waterside Level Crossing. So, yeah, it's across the railway line. As you can see, it is electric. There's the looking that way. I don't like to hang about too much on railways, because you shouldn't really. I've now got to find my way up through the trees to the Wallace Monument. Well, across the road, I'm in this little park here, and I think any minute some serious climbing is going to begin. This has been, apart from the railway bridge, that's been the only gradient I've had. And it's been a dead flat walk. But now, I've got half a mile of steeper than this. Um, it's going to well, probably be up steps. So it's been a bit of a contrast now. It's all dead flat, this was all glaciers, but the volcanic activity, I believe, was too hard to be destroyed by glaciers. The bus going along there. I might, I might get a bus back, I haven't decided yet. Yeah, so here we go. Um, I'm going to start to climb these steps. I'm not going to count the steps and I'm not going to talk the whole way up. Soon I'll prove you puffed out, but yeah. Onwards and upwards. So here is the visitor centre for the Wallace Monument. There's a gift shop, there's a tea room, but we're not yet at the Wallace Monument. There it is, up there. I've got a lot more climbing to do. If I wanted to, and it is raining, I could put those people over there and get the free shuttle bus. But I'm going to walk up there and enjoy the view. So there's, there's a few different paths. It's going to take me up there. And then I might be lazy and get the bus down, just because it'd be fun to have a bus ride. So now it's time to really go up to the Wallace Monument. So that's the path I'm going to follow up to the monument up there. This is the back of the visitor centre. I'll just show you this map here. So I'm there. I probably could go that way. That might be more sense. I might go this way around this red path to see a bit more, but I'll decide as I go. But as we go up, before I get too puffed out from walking uphill, the one question you may have been thinking well, was, who is Wallace? Why? What's the Wallace Monument all about? Well, the Wallace Monument commemorates Sir William um, Wallace. He's a Scottish hero and uh, he he was known for his um, sort of heroic, um, what's the word, but you know, he basically did well at the Battle of Stirling Bridge in 1297. My uh, Scottish history or history isn't great, I just like to go and explore places, but I'm no historian, so I'll try and remember a few facts to tell you. So he's seen as like a Scottish icon for, you know, um, Scotland becoming Scotland as it is. So um, that's why they built this tower. It's a Victorian Gothic tower, and we're going up to it. So I've just got to follow this path now up through the trees. So I'm enjoying the pleasant walk around the crag through the bluebells and the gorse. And here we get to a viewpoint. Now it's a pretty good view here. It's probably going to be even better when we get on the monument, but it might be really windy. It's a bit sheltered here, so I thought I'd point out what I can. Well, fairly obviously, here's the meandering on the fourth. Just over there, it's hard to see, but that's Canvas Kenneth Abbey. So you can see the road. Yes, the Abbey's about there. We, we walked along that road to down there, and um, we crossed the railway just below. And then obviously there's castles over there. So you can see now how um, this glacial valley has formed, well, you would have been second one to pass this, but it's formed and left these volcanic rocks. So we've got this one, which we're on. There's the one over there, which the city and the castle sits on. There's another one over there. You can see a big urban area of Stirling down below us. You can probably just see running kind of parallel to fourth, just there, the railway line to Alloa. 
be nice if a train came, so perhaps I'll hang around and see a train before I continue. Um, so, here it is, small view. So that's the urban housing estates of Stirling. What happens here? Some nice gorse bushes. Yeah, look at the flowers, they look great. Uh, yeah, there's a bench, so the main path's a bit in the woods, but I will. I'll follow around, but I just really like this view. I know it's going to be great from the top of the monument, of course we'll see the other way, but I'm just thinking it might be, it's windy here, it's possibly going to be too windy to talk, so I might have to do a panorama, but we'll find out when we get there. But anyway, that is the view over Stirling. hung around to see a train that was good just like looking at a model railway I'm almost there now there it is in front of us so the monument was opened in 1869 designed by the architect Thomas Rochehead it's 220 feet high so and obviously we are already very high anyway so let's have a look it's really like this Victorian Gothic style I'm excited because I always enjoy climbing up towers and seeing the views so um, I know what it's going to be like it's going to be be wet obviously but then that's all part of the fun so what we'll do we'll have one more look at the view this way out over before we go up and um, we shall see a very spectacular view so have a look at the building look at that it's really yeah very spectacular really like that so we are going up there but first let's just see this side of Stirling so come round to Craig a bit there's the castle the Durling's urban area those um, 60s, 70s buildings over there, that's the university. Over there is Bridge of Allen. If you ever go to Bridge of Allen and want a pub to go to, the Allen Water Brew House is very good. They brew their own beer and it's brilliant. So do, do go there if you end up in Bridge of Allen. But right now, I'm going in there and up there. I'm just uh, paid to go in. Now, I'm going up. It's uh, not the spiral staircase just yet. Going up a long, sort of straight staircase. But then, nothing I get to here it becomes spiral. I'm not going to film all the way, especially if someone comes down. The camera might be a bit just too much. So echoey. So, let's go up. Up we go. Up and up. Well, we're getting higher and higher up the spiral staircase. Continues on up. But here's another one of the rooms. There's one down there where I watched a film of about William Wallace. Here's another Hall of Heroes. So obviously William Wallace was a hero to Scotland. And uh, these are our heroes. I'm not going to comment on all of them, but some of them, like Sir Walter Scott, who designed Scott's Monument in Edinburgh, which I went up when I was a child. Um, and I've heard of William Murdoch, an engineer, and of course James Watt, he's quite well known, especially people who like um, you know, engineering side of things. David Livingston I've heard of. William Gladstone. Yeah, this is Scottish hero, so it's quite a nice room. And Thomas Carlyle, of course, the author. I've been to his house. His house where he was born at Eccleffecken is worth a visit. It's National Trust of Scotland. And then there's also his house in London where he lived in later life. And of course there's Robert Burns. I always enjoy haggis on Burns night. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to continue on up to the top of the tower and we'll go and see the views, which are somewhere above there. Coming into another room now. Here I can explain a bit more about the Battle of Stirling Bridge and William Wallace came such a hero. So, the English on one side, the fourth, Scotch on the other. Just like I did, an Englishman today, I crossed the fourth. So did those Englishmen all those years ago. I got much more friendly welcome though, because um, there was no battle, but the British Sterling collapsed, and that's how that was like William Wallace's first victory. And um, from then on, he basically became a hero. Various other things happened. 
I'm not going to go through them all. There's a picture of how that, I recognise that. But there's a film showing there, and it shows that meander on the fourth, how it looked in, what was it, 1297. I'm going to continue on, but there's two more floors to go up to the top. Well, I'm now almost at the top of the Wallace Monument. Oh, I didn't quite expect it to be like this. Come out into here. And I can't really see much of you. See, the tower continues. Uh, so, yeah, let's go have a look through. It's not too windy. Maybe I should get our first view. And there we are, there's the urban Sterling. Looks like a school down there. So the city centre is that way. And, you know, and over there is Bridge Valley. Look at this, though. It's, Oh yeah, look at that, that's the... We're going to go up to it. Let's go through here then. And it's going to get windy. It's really windy. Okay, well... Ah, there, there's the, the view of the fort. The Stanley Castle is just over there. If we continue through, through these, I didn't kind of imagine it to be like this. Oh, there's a window there down into the room. I was just down there. Okay, that's a better view. I know it's windy. Better view over. Towards Stirling, I've got to see Campus Kenneth Abbey down there. Let's go through around these next corners. That's looking out towards Alloa. And we're going to continue around here. I want to see what's on the side, it's not really see that view. Yeah, so yeah, Alloa will be that town in the distance over there. I went there on the train once, but it didn't have very long. The train was delayed, so I literally came straight back, so I've not been to Alloa. And we come round here, and yeah, that, that's Stirling University down there. And then, oh, I see, yes, we're going along up some steps up. Stand here. You won't be able to hear me when I get in there, I don't think, because it's very, very windy. But um, I'm going to go in there anyway and show you what it's like. We'll look up. So here we go up the final few steps.